Excellent. Hey, this is Pierce with the Metasploit development team here at Rapid7. Uh, put together a little video today to talk about the new metal extension loader. Uh, we're going to cover what it is and uh, run through a working example with our first extension module, the network sniffer module. And uh, then uh, lastly, I'll show an example of how to write a Hello World uh, extension uh, and we'll run it. Well, let's jump in. A brief recap. What's Metal? Metal is our POSIX interpreter. Uh, so to run on Linux, OS X, um, it's compiled for a number of different architectures, ARM, MIPS, x86, um, uh, PowerPC. Uh, it intentionally has a small footprint, both in size and resource usage. Um, so it should be real friendly for uh, embedded type devices. Uh, and then at the following GitHub uh, URL, you can find the official Rapid7 uh, Metal repo. The code's right there. Okay, so what are extensions? Extensions, in a, in a very general description, are code or modules which extend Metal's built-in functionality. Uh, these are very similar to the, the extensions with the C-based interpreter um, that we've been using for a number of years. Uh, it allows us to keep Metal uh, itself uh, kind of a smaller size um, and uh, kind of focused. And so what's the benefit of extensions? Well, they're only loaded on the target when you need them. Uh, if you're not planning on doing any sniffing of network traffic, you don't need to load that extension. Uh, helps keep the you know, footprint on the target small. Uh, and it helps keep metal itself small. Um, that's a, a bit benefit of extensions. Uh, one nice thing about metal extensions is they offer the flexibility to where they're not relegated to only one language. Um, they could be written in any language so long as the target can support that language. So you, you could have uh, even like a, a Ruby or Perl uh, or Bash, you know, um, extension as long as the target knows how to run that type of extension. Cool. What else? Uh, Metal extensions offer uh, the usual uh, process execution from the file system uh, model. Uh, and additionally, they also offer uh, being used as a binary image uh, via process hollowing. Uh, the latter might be useful if you find yourself wanting to load an extension on a system that doesn't have a writable file system. Um, so that's a, that's a new capability. Uh, also, the design of extensions with, within Metal uh, allows for more flexibility when uh, wanting to use code that may be licensed uh, differently or licenses in the past that, that we may have um, shied away from. Uh, so there's just a nice benefit there. Any other stuff? Sure. Metal extensions could be used to run local exploits for things like privilege escalation. And in the future, uh, metal extensions may even be able to run Metasploit framework modules. How cool would that be? Uh, so with that, uh, let's hop in with a working example of our first metal extension, Network Sniffer. Okay, so what we've got here in the top window, I'll be running my MSF console. I'll get that started. Um, this is an Ubuntu VM I do development with. Um, the bottom right window is a secondary uh, test Ubuntu VM that will be our target. Uh, in this case, and this bottom left window is just my my host OS um, OS X. All right, so first thing let's do uh, let's we want to get Metal running on the on the target, so we'll use the auxiliary um, scanner SSH SSH login module. I uh, will say username root password. Bad idea to allow SSH by, in by root by password, uh, but we're doing this for just as a test uh, example. Seven. Okay. I think we're good there, so let's give it a shot. Okay. So it says we have a shell session. Sure enough, there it is. Let's go ahead and upgrade that. We're going to upgrade it to an interpreter, which in this case is metal. So upgrade session one. 
I think it's starting the multi-handler. And fingers crossed, we see an interpreter session to open. So we we'll lift our sessions. There it is. So let's let's uh, we've got that running. Let's get our interpreter prompt that session. We'll just do a help real quick. See see what it's got. So here, right out of the gate, uh, with no extensions loaded, this is kind of the standard set of um, commands supported by Metal. Um, so now let's load our sniffer. So load a little tab complete there sniffer module uh, this is going to load an elf uh, binary across it'll download it to the target and it should be running now let's do help and see if we see some new commands yes we do sniffer commands so these are the commands we can use to uh, get a list of interfaces to start a capture to get the status or stats of a particular capture and then also to stop and dump a capture or release it if you're done with the, the capture packets. So let's get a list of uh, available interfaces. Okay, so here's a list of available interfaces that have been found on our target uh, system here. Let's go ahead and start capture. Let's never, let's never start. There we go. And if you just hit enter without any arguments, it'll give you usage information. In this case, let's capture on interface one, network interface one. Let's capture, let's say, 2,000 byte packet buffer, which is a circular buffer. So if it fills up, it'll just start dropping the oldest packets. Um, but we're guaranteed that we'll, we'll, it'll max out at 2,000 and just wrap if it needs to. And as you can see in the live last argument here, it supports uh, Berkeley packet filter um type syntax so let's take advantage of that uh say i only want to see port 80 traffic okay so it says hey now you're started a capture on interface one and so we can get stats for that uh sniffer stats if you enter just for usage again it says you need interface a to create interface one it says it hasn't seen anything yet okay fair enough so this is the the target vm uh where metal is running so let's do a ping which should generate traffic on that interface. Um, but we can see that it still says, because of our filter we've set to say, oh, we're only interested in port 80 traffic, uh, it's not capturing ping traffic. However, if we do a curl, let's ping google.com real quick. We'll make sure that we still set the case. Great. We'll do a curl of google.com. Oh, we saw the usual 301. But hey, look, now we have some stats. Cool. We do a curl of metasploit.com and the stats go up again. Great. All right. So let's go ahead and stop our capture. So for stop, we'll give you the usage with that. So stop on one. It says, great, you stopped. We've captured 20 packets to take up this many bytes. Um, you can download or release them. So we want to download them, we want to save them. So sniffer dump. What this will do is it will take that. Pack, cap, captured packet buffer that's on the target, in memory on the target, and we'll download it back to where we are running framework and store it locally on our system that's running framework. So um, we want to dump interface one's capture, and we want to go ahead and put it in, uh, we'll say this this file here on the temp directory. Okay, set it, flushed it from the target uh, to our system running framework. It uh, gives you all the information there. Great. Now, because I'm running in a VM, um, I'm going to actually pull this file down to my host OS. And over here, we can see here it, it's showed up here. We can double click it to open it in Wireshark. And we should see, uh, yeah, only, only port 80 traffic. Notice we don't see any of the pings uh, that we had initiated. Uh, and we don't see any uh, DNS lookups either. Uh, we are only seeing traffic to and from port 80, which you can see in the in the windows here with the Wireshark's visibility. So uh, that's an example of running the Sniffer Metal extension. Okay, so let's take a look at creating an example uh, Hello World uh, extension. Real basic extension. Um, it will be designed to be uh, loaded to the metal running on the target. 
Um, it'll support one command that when you type in the command at your interpreter prompt uh, on your OSF console instance, that this command will be sent over to Metal. Metal will locate the extension that handles that command, pass that along, and we'll return the response back. In this case, the response will be a string that says, hello world, and we should see that on our MSF console prompt. Uh, similar to like a cooking TV show, I've gone ahead and typed up uh, a bunch of the stuff. So let's walk through it, um, show you the pieces that, that go into um, adding a new extension. Uh, so what we've got here in my top window is uh, my, my Metasploit framework uh, development instance. It's just a clone of uh, the GitHub repo. And uh, in the bottom window is um, uh, my Metal uh, repo. Uh, and these are running on the same system uh, for development purposes. Uh, generally, we'll, I'll run the metal instance uh, directly and have it connect uh, back to my uh, listening uh, Metasploit framework instance where a handler is running for that. Um, and then over here in the back is this little third window that's just um, tailing a, a debug log. Um, I'll show you how the metal, metal extensions can log. Uh, to a file for debug, uh, if you, if you hopefully useful for development. Um, they can also log be a standard error to metal itself. Uh, we'll see that in a minute, but we don't. We can just ignore this window uh, for now. So there's two pieces when doing an extension. Um, there's a piece uh, that the extension itself, the code that will be executed on the target, and that is handled within the metal project. Um, then there's also a framework side that uh, extends framework to understand uh, what commands are associated with this extension and uh, also what type of packets are, uh, are associated with this extension. We use a TLV uh, formatted uh, packet type length value. Uh, and so we need framework needs that those bits of information in order to know how to uh, interact with the, the particular extension. So, with that said, um, I want to point out real quick that there is a lot of information in this top level markdown document called extensions.md. Um, a lot of what I'm going to be covering is contained within that document um, about how to create your own extensions and some of these details we'll be talking about. So uh, you should totally uh, just you know, check that out um, uh, for. Um, any information um, related to extensions. Uh, let's get started. The first thing we'll need to do, we'll work on, we'll get the extension um, created and running or built on the metal side, and then we can give it a little test test run to make sure that it's working. Um, so in the inside the top level directory, there's a directory, another directory called metal, and there is a directory called extensions. And within that, this is the directory we're going to place our extensions. You can see that I've created a hello world directory. And within that are a few files. Uh, we use the automake uh, uh, with autoconf tools to uh, for our build process. So there's a make file am here. Uh, we'll take a quick look at that. Uh, you can see it doesn't have a lot to it. Um, uh, you know, declares itself. Uh, to be called hello world and then it says it uses um, metal library so metal itself mostly is a library and then um, the executable is you know just pulls in that library for metal and we do use some of the things like the tlv processing uh, extensions do use that and that's part of the metal library so we'll just say our extension depends on the library um, we have one source file that's it there and include directories flags needed and then this uh, these lines down here handle the creation of the uh, binary image in case we want to use that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The uh, other files in here to make file.in in is a generated file, so you can ignore that. Um, we can look at the, the header file. is going to be real simple since we only have one command we're supporting. Um, we literally only have one TLB that we're declaring, and we're Basically, the interesting part here is that it's, we're saying it's a string type, okay? And for our source file, um, again, real simple source file. Um, kind of the big things to, you know, the, the, the main thing here is to pull in extension.h, which has a lot of the function definitions that the extension will need for registering commands that it handles with, with metal, so that metal knows when certain commands come in, 
which extension to, to, to use. And then also, of course, like our Hello World extension, our header file so that we can pull in um, TLB definitions and any other kind of uh, information there. And then up here, you would have any of your other um, you know, type of uh, header files that you need to include, depending on what you're calling within your source code. So let's go ahead and go to the go to the main function and look at that real quick. Start there. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, we have I mentioned the ability to for debug logging. Um, this is can be helpful, uh, you know, particularly during development. Um, it supports various log levels, error, debug info. Um, we had in this particular case, I'm logging to a file on my system. But you can also log uh, through metal. Uh, it'll actually use the standard error connection. Um, a little bit more info on that. Spawned uh, extensions are become a uh, spawned process of the, of the metal itself, and then metal uses standard and standard out to communicate uh, with the extension, um, and also standard error. So log messages or error messages or uh, other information messages will go over standard error. Um, TLV uh, uh, type messages will go over uh, standard out from of the extension uh, back to metal. Uh, down in here, uh, there's some initialization um, that happens here. We get a handle for an extension, and then this is the secret sauce that uh, allows metal itself to associate commands with a particular extension. So in this case, we're saying We'll have a hello who command that when it when presented when CLV shows up with the command in, in it that says hello who we want to be called and we want our respond to query function to be called which is above we'll look at that in just a second and so by calling this extension ad handler um, metal now after this call completes metal will know that any TLV that comes in with a hello who is the command uh, that it should actually call this function this function will handle that. Um, and then we just have a log message that says, hey, we're starting our extension. This is the actual code that starts our extension. It puts it in an event loop, um, waiting for incoming TLVs. And then when metal gets shut down or terminated, uh, this will break free and our, we do any kind of cleanup on the way out. So if we have other things we've allocated off the heap that we need to free or whatnot, this is the appropriate place to, to do them um, down here. And then our extension actually exits. So if we back up to look at our respond to query, which actually handles the incoming command uh, TL, via TLV, uh, we have a log message just so we can say, see that oh yeah, our handler actually got called, and we set up a response packet um, that's going to go back to uh, Metasploit framework, um, and within that we put we have our own TLV type that we created, which is what we looked at a second ago from the hello world header file, which is really just a string. And we want it to be the value hello world. And then we'll add the result that we'll say this was a successful call. Of course, there are result failures, which are you can are handy for you to use that code when a command couldn't be completed for some reason. And that way it'll be displayed to the user at the MSF console and interpreter prompt that something in error happened. In our case, it's a pretty simple function. We just have a success case. So consider that done. All right. So if we exit out of here, and um, there are a couple other uh, files which get changed when you add a new extension. Um, one is the make file um, dot am in the extensions directory itself. Uh, so all I did was I added the hello world there so that it knows that there's a subdirectory it needs to go go parse there. And then one other place that we make, I think it's here, or it might be here, figure AC. Um, we add one, uh, we add the, the generated make file to this list here. Um, with those changes, uh, that's, those, that's what's required in order to uh, create a new uh, metal extension. Um, so this this satisfies the portion of the, the, the that we need in order to build and deploy on the target. Um, we can build it with a, a make command. In this case, I'm going to say use the Linux uh, muscle uh, libc um, targeting 64-bit uh, x86 uh, arc 
architecture. And um, in this case, uh, let me let me go ahead and do a clean. I'll, I'll this 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 here will rebuild metal and the extensions. Um, I have verbosity turned on so I can see all the individual commands. Um, it doesn't take very long um, to build uh, metal itself and the any the extensions. It's pretty quick. Um, so it's done. Uh, and in this case, we can scroll back and we should be able to see. Uh, that yeah here it said okay I'm entering the directory for hello world uh, commands associated with build it, building hello world um, this was our, our our hook that we saw in the make file.am that creates the the binary image uh, of our hello world extension so we have both the elf uh, this is the elf uh, version executable of hello world extension and then the binary image version is there. Um, and it completed without errors. Great. So that's nice. What, what can we, you know, can we be sure it built? Can we be sure it runs? Um, we can look in our build directory. We can go to the specific uh, type of build that was. And in the, bin, in the bin directory, we should see um, binaries for these. And so let me back up here and do an ls this directory, and we should see. Um, right, so we see uh, the executables, the ELFs, and then we also see the binary image versions. You'll notice there's a, a binary image version of Metal itself. Uh, but what we can do here is now we can actually just, just as a simple sanity check, is we can execute our Hello World and just see if it runs. And so what we, what we do see is it printed out Hello Who, which if you recall from our .c source file, Hello, who is the name of the, is the command inside the TLV that we're looking for, and that, that our new Hello World extension is going to respond to. And this, this what we see here is this is it registering with Metal. When Metal spawns the Hello World process, Hello World will dump out any commands on standard out that it, it wants to register for. And this is so this is just an easy, quick sanity check. So to see what Metal will see when it runs it. Um, the extra blank line here is how. Metal determines that it's reached the end of the list of commands being registered for by a particular extension. So that's a nice little quick sanity check. Great. So now we have a simple Hello World extension. Let's use it. Um, on the framework side, there's a uh, there are a few files that um, that need to be created uh, in order to support our new extension. Well, first and foremost, let's go ahead and copy over the the new extension we just created. Uh, Metal manages extensions within the gem itself using an API call that the framework will make to go see which uh, uh, extensions are available. And then to load the extensions is also an API call. Uh, so what we'll do is we will copy um, just from the directory we were just in. This is the directory we were, we were just looking at just now in this other window. And we're going to copy it over into, uh, in my case, where my my Metasploit payloads metal gem resides um, and within it's the correct uh, bin directory for the architecture uh, OS uh, libc uh, model we're using. So this copy command will bring over the, the latest uh, Hello World we built. Now let's take a quick look at some of these, uh, these files I mentioned that we would need. Within the extensions directory, you'll see that there's a directory for each type of extension. Most of these are for the C-based interpreter. Um, and we now have, uh, uh, we, we, we created a new Hello World one. So here, <coughs> excuse me, I created a Hello World directory. And within that, <coughs> now we have two files, pretty straightforward. Now let's take a look at tlv.rb. And if you guess that it's going to be just a TLV um, definition for our new um, Hello World, <coughs> excuse me, TLV uh, command, um, you guessed right. So nothing too crazy there. That gives us the TLV definition. The thing to note is that it needs, the values need to match what is over here in your Hello World.h or your extension file uh, here. Um, these need to line up, uh, uh, and so that the messages messaging matches up between the framework side and the target running metal. Uh, 
the other file here is uh, for us a very simple file that basically pulls in, you can see at the top here, it pulls in the TLV definitions, uh, creates a class that's um, inherits from extension, and uh, super simple initialized routine really is allowing the framework to associate this new Hello World extension. And uh, we have this uh, function call that we've created called greeting please. And it, you can see here, it is sending the hello who uh, command. This is this create request um, creates a TLV packet and then this sends the TLV packet. And then the, with the response that we get, we then use this get TLV value to, to parse out the TLV type hello world response. So if we come down here and look here in our file, our source code for the extension, you can see our, <clears throat> this was the, this, these are the same, um, same definition should be the same value in the TLV response. It's communicated that way. Okay, so we've got this, got this file. What about, how does that greeting please get called? So that is handled in the command dispatcher file. This one is just um, to extend uh, the available commands. Um, and so we can see here that now we've got, we're going to say, okay, for our hello world extension, we're going to have a command called say hello. And the, the help message itself is really not that helpful, but this is just an example. So if somebody did help, they, they would see that they could run the command say hello. And what's it going to do? It's going to do the thing. Um, this is the actual code that gets executed when somebody types, uh, loads the hello world module and types to say hello on the command line. Um, and if it works, we should see an output of this message followed by the response. And to refresh our memory, the response is, whoops, I'm bouncing around here. Writer hello with world all caps and an exclamation mark is what they should see if it all works fine. This is where we call the greeting please method, okay? Pretty straightforward, short file, that's the end of the file. All right, how about a working example? So I'm gonna start up an interpreter. All right, I'm gonna start up in MSF console. I'm gonna use a couple, I'm gonna use the execute command to go ahead and handle a few things for me automatically. Um, so we'll let that sit a second. Over here, I'm gonna start up, uh, you can go ahead and start up metal. You don't have to wait for um, your handler to be running. Um, so you can see, so from this, when I'm, I'm doing this command, I'm saying, okay, I'm going to take the metal that we just built. Um, this is the one we just built, and I'm going to say, try to connect to this URL, uh, which is where my handler exists, and you can see it's listening on 10.0.2.4, uh, debug three, so I can actually see um, debug going on. Oh, oh, let's see. And so we've got, so funny enough, when we did that little test run of running our extension on the command line, here, I'll show that again real quick. Um, we should be able, we can see that it, it is logging to the file that, hey, I started up, which is good, right? Hey, I started up, cool. Hey, I started up, okay, good deal. So that, so our logging is working. So now we're going to run Metal. So now Metal is running and it's saying, oh, I couldn't connect. A couple blank lines on the log file, I couldn't connect. Well, that's fine because I haven't actually run the handler yet. So I'm gonna run the handler. Now we should see information that, oh, interpreter session connected, opened. Okay, great, so we're in. You can, this is output for metal here. You can see that it's running, it's doing a heartbeat to keep things going. Our log file hasn't logged in. I'll just put some equal signs in there. To, okay, good help. Here you can see a list of the commands that, that are supported by metal uh, once, it's, once it's been loaded on a target. So we'll want to load our extension. Load, oh, tab complete. Okay, success. So now if we say help, oh, look, we have hello world commands. And look, there's a command called say hello. And what does it do? It does the thing. Well, why don't we say hello? And before we hit enter on this one, I want to come over here and show that, oh, it, we did get to see the log in our, our debug log file that I've set up that says it's starting the extension. And so we're going to say hello. Now, quite a few things happened here. Uh, we'll go through real quick. So if it worked, it should be it. it and it is it. It's hello world. It's the string the way we expected it from our extension. Uh, you can see down here in the logging of, of metal that metal got a hello who method. And here, 
we see that our extension processed the hello who method and, and printed out uh, our second debug message that we had added that says, oh, I'm sending the response from there. So the handler fired and which we see over here. So that's really it in a nutshell of how to create a metal extension. Thanks for watching. Excellent.